Hello, my name is Jennifer Williams, and today I get to study Romans 8, 28 with you. And I'm going to use the SOAP method to do this. So um, let's start off with our S, which is scripture. Let's read the scripture, Romans 8, 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Wow, that's a really big verse, and there's so much held in, in this verse. And I think one of the most common things that we hear coming from this verse is, well, if, we, if the Bible says that we can know this, how can I know it when I don't really see God working? So let's make some observations about this from our text. Um, first of all, this chapter is chock full of God talking about he, how he has worked on our behalf, how he has done work for us. And so um, I really challenge you at some point, if, if, you, if you want to, go back through Romans chapter 8 and just underline everywhere where it's saying that God is working and try and circle every time where it says that we have to work and just um, come back to me and let me know how that works out. Um, you're going to do a lot of underlining. I'll just put it that way. So um, let's let's make some observations about this. Um, it says that in many manuscripts, this actually says that God works all things together for good. And so implied in this entire chapter is God working. So we can assume here that God is doing the work. When God is the one that's doing the work, we then see that God is working for good. And so we kind of have to let God define good. So if I wanted to define good, it would mean that everything was going to work out great. I was going to be successful in everything that I was going to do. I would never age a day in my life and um, everything would just be great. But that is not God's definition of good. So thankfully, we don't have to go too far in this passage to find out what God's definition of good is for us. And this is his purpose for us. It's found in the next two verses. So bear with me while I read these. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he, Jesus, might be the firstborn among many brothers. So we see the purpose that God has for us, the good purpose God has for us, to be conformed to the image of his son so that Jesus might be the firstborn among many brothers. God's building this huge family, and he wants us as Christians to fit right into it, to be conformed to it, to be comfortable there, to know that we belong there, okay? That's God's good purpose for us. But it goes even further, okay? This is where it gets super rich. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Okay, that's a lot of big words, and JJ is available after the service to explain all of them to you. But I'm going to dwell on the verb tenses here, word, alert, word nerd alert here. I love words. And these verb tenses are super, super important because they're all in the past, okay? Even down to the point where he says that God glorified us, okay? Now, that glorification is when we actually get to spend eternity with him in perfection, understanding and seeing him perfectly and clearly, the veil will have been removed. Our eyes will have been completely open to understand God in his entirety and to be with him in perfection with all of those brothers and sisters. So if God says that's already done, it, it's, it's in the past tense right here. That is basically saying, without getting into all of the big words, God created you he decided that he was going to call you to be a believer, and eventually he is going to glorify you and take you into heaven and to live with him forever. But he considers it already done. He's the sovereign God. His plan, it's already done. There's a period at the end of the sentence. So that means that the good that he has purposed for us is already done in his mind. But meanwhile, we have to live here on earth as humans, right? We have to, we have to go through this process from, our just, from being justified to being glorified. That's where we're living right now. And what that is, is all of life. It's everything that happens to us, all things, the good stuff, the bad stuff, 
the stuff that we don't want to really happen, the stuff that just comes up. So how do we see that God is working even when we don't really know, we can't feel for sure that he is? One, we can see that he is sovereign. He's already said it's completed. He sees us in heaven with him, feasting at his banqueting table. And you know what? Brothers and sisters, he wants you to have that same thing here on earth. It will not be perfect. It will not be in its entirety. But the same goodness that God has for us in heaven, the same riches that he has for us in heaven, they are available to us on earth. Okay? So really the question is not how can I see it or how can I know But maybe we should ask ourselves, and this is where the application comes in. We should ask ourselves, why am I not seeing that? What's keeping me from seeing God working for my good? Maybe maybe it's my rebellious heart that doesn't want to admit that God's truth is what I need for my soul. Maybe it's that I am just stomping my feet and saying I want my own way. Maybe in the good times, I'm not seeing God working for good because I'm not willing to humbly say, thank you, Lord. You're the one who allowed me to do this or that. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. So when we're looking for the good that God is working through all things in our life, it's already there. It's already in God's plan. He designed it. He worked it out. He's got a period at the end of the sentence. The question is, are we going to choose to see it? Are we going to choose to allow it to come into our lives? His good purpose is that we are conformed to the image of his son. That's his good purpose. Are we going to look at every situation, good or bad, and say, how can God make me more like his son? How can God use this to make me more like him? How can God use this to take me just that much closer to glory? And if we really look at every situation and we humbly ask God that, he will answer our prayers. He will show us how he is working for our good. He will make us more like Jesus, and he will make us fit in more, conform more, and be more comfortable in God's family. And that's right where he wants us. Thank you so much for studying this scripture with me. Let's pray. Father God, we praise you and adore you for your word. Lord, we thank you that there's a period at the end of that sentence, that the good that you have worked for us is already done, and now we just get to live it out. Father, forgive us when our rebellious hearts don't want to let that happen. Forgive us when we just want things our way. Forgive us when we we just choose not to see your good work. Lord, instead, help us to feast at your banqueting table every day that we are here on this earth. Help us, Lord, to have willing hearts to to allow you to move us closer and closer to you and more and more and more into the image of your son so that we can fit in, be comfortable, and love being part of your family, Lord God, and that we can see your good work. We thank you so much for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.